you are very welcome to our time together in front of the Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, Christ exposed in our midst this day. You are very welcome indeed. We journey into the season of Advent, a time of hope, a time of renewal, a time of preparation for the coming of Christ at Christmas. And of course, looking forward to the second coming of Christ at the end of time. So let us begin this evening with our prayer with Christ very much in our midst, journeying with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you very much to, on behalf of Shalom World Prayer, and we endeavour to ensure that everyone's prayer is, is woven into this evening's meditation and as we gather as God's family. But we particularly remember the sick this evening across the whole world. Let's ponder a little moment as we gather in the presence of Christ, who yearns to listen to what is happening in our hearts and minds. And as we place before him those who are unwell on so many different levels at this time, praying for healing. So let's maybe call to mind those who we are carrying in our hearts this evening. And as we do so, I'm just going to sing a little piece of music from the season of Advent to help us in our prayerfulness. Come, or come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. For Israel. Let us present those whom we have been asked to pray for, those that we know personally, or perhaps those who have no one to pray for them. We remember those who are physically unwell. I would like to pray this evening for a parishioner of mine, Arthur, who is in hospital, praying that the doctors will indeed be able to get to the root of the issue and bring about healing. Thankfully, we pray for all our parishioners who are housebound, those who are also in hospitals or indeed hospices at this time. We pray for those who suffer from mental illness of any kind. Depression can be so debilitating, so draining. We ask you, Lord, to be with those who suffer from mental illness, which is significantly clear in the midst of what we have all come through in regard to COVID and many other life's experiences. 
We remember those who suffer from addictions of any kind, asking you, Lord, to grant relief, a sense of healing, and the ability to take that first step to recovery with the support of others. We keep in mind all those who tend to the sick, the carers in the community, frontline workers, particularly in those health systems across the world. We pray very much indeed for family members too, who are caring for the sick. The sick, of course, can bring a lot of hope, a lot of healing in their own right, by virtue of their witness. It is our own faith in Christ that enables us to place the sick before him as he tended to the sick in his own time, as he does today through so many people. We are now journeying into the season of Advent, a word that means coming towards, towards Bethlehem, of course, an arduous enough journey for Mary and Joseph and yet one that they were willing to take, and one that was to change their lives, of course. One of the great figures in the season of Advent is that figure of John the Baptist, a man of great courage, someone who was very able to spell it out and to say it as it was even though this didn't go down well with those who listened to him, constantly trying to catch him out. So I'd like to reflect on this great Advent prophet, filled with a sense of missionary zeal to prepare the way for Christ himself. I would like to take a little extract from the Gospel of St. Mark, which tells us, gives us a clue as to John the Baptist and what made him tick. Certainly in regard to John the Baptist and many of the paintings that you see with the Holy Family, John is always pointing towards Christ, constantly lifting him before our presence, signaling to him, because he is the Messiah, the one that John is waiting for. Let's listen to the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look. I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance or the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you 
with the Holy Spirit. So here we have the figure of John, whose whole reason for being was to be that person who prepared the way to make smooth the way for Christ, the Messiah. He was certainly determined in his actions as the prophet, the one who was very much in tune with what God was asking him to do, even if it meant rejection, criticism. For those who listened to John the Baptist, this curiosity in the desert, their lives were indeed changed and transformed. An answering of that invitation to follow God, to be at peace within themselves, but even more so, to discover the path that would lead them to eternal life. For those who criticized John and who came to see him simply because of their nosiness, were they affected too? Were they changed in some way by what he said? I'd like to think that they were. Ultimately, John the Baptist is the one who realizes that his mission is almost complete. He longs and yearns to hear the signs of the kingdom of God truly taking root. Root in Christ, of course. John will soon hear the words of Christ, that the blind see, the lame walk. The kingdom of God begins to take effect. And John's mission while coming to a close, fills him with the realization that Christ must increase and he, John, must decrease. A life's ambition coming to a close and yet one that he gave fully and with a heart and a half. This calling inspired and motivated him every step of the way. Let's think about John and how he accepted that sense of God within him. Through his actions, the doorway was open to those who would encounter Christ. The handing on, as it were, of the work of John, who prepared the way to the Son of God, who would reveal the kingdom of God in its total and utter wonder. We pause a moment now as we are present in front of Jesus himself. We ask him to help us to smooth the way, to prepare a way for Christ in our own hearts and minds, and that Christ may enter into the lives of those who are sick, unwell, those who struggle, those who are searching for God, those perhaps who have given up the search. Could there be a John the Baptist figure? who could revitalize, rekindle that sense of connection. Let's take a little moment in peace and in quiet in front of Jesus as we hand over to him all the sick, all who, strug who struggle within, those who experience storms of resentment, hurt, not being loved, a 
but a new sense of belonging or acceptance. Those who feel on the margins, those who have been misunderstood. Whatever that sense of brokenness is, let us commend all into Jesus' hands who can affect change. to sing a little piece of music to help us in this task as we present all those before God, before Christ his Son. We might add all those who care, who are the hands of Christ, the feet of Christ, the mind of Christ, the nurse, the doctor, carer, family member, good friend, the kindness of a stranger, the comfort brought to someone who's bereaved, the little miracles taking place on frontiers where there is such brokenness and war. Advent hope, a longing for peace. Oh, comfort my people and calm all their fear, and tell them the time of salvation draws near. Tell them I come to remove all their shame, and they will forever give praise to my name. Proclaim to the cities of Judah my word, that gentle yet strong is the hand of the Lord. I rescue the captives, my people dear. And bring them to justice and joy without end. You must increase, I must decrease. Lord Jesus, help us to make you the center of our own lives. Help us to have the ability and the strength to hand over our lives into your hands. Help us in the moments of challenge and difficulty that we face. Heal us within, strengthen us. Help us to be John the Baptist-like, bringing Christ into the lives of others, preparing the way soothing hearts. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't it true that in some instances we are wounded healers ourselves? Perhaps it's only in fully understanding our own woundedness that we can truly appreciate the healing of the woundedness in others. We pray also this evening for our beautiful world, our homeland, which speaks to us of the brokenness that our homeland experiences. We pray that we can bring healing of the fracturing, that we can do our part, not just for ourselves, but for future generations too. Let's bring our beautiful world created by God and given to us in trust. Let's present our homeland, which also suffers and aches with pain. parish recently went to Rome and Assisi and we had the wonderful chance of encountering so many wonderful places but one such place in Assisi was not just the tomb of Saint Francis which was superb but also going to visit the tomb of a young saint in the making I suppose blessed Carlo Acutis A young 15 year old sense of wisdom, even in the midst of his own life, touched the lives of so many others. He wanted to bring Christ to those that he encountered. Somewhat like John the Baptist, preparing the way, enabling them to understand the presence of Jesus himself particularly in the Eucharist, and how through his own illness towards the end of his life, there was a real sense of abandonment into God's eternal ocean of love. While there, we were able to hear about some of the stories of his life. One such phrase was, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven and how he endeavoured to use his time wisely to truly embrace Jesus, as we ourselves endeavour to do this evening. But there is one little phrase that struck me whenever I was in Assisi, and there's a little phrase which is very John the Baptist-like, I have to say. And Carol could have said, in Italian, non io ma Dio, not I, but God. For me, there's very much a John the Baptist twist in that little phrase, the letting go and letting God. So this evening, as we continue our prayers for the sick, sick, remind us not only of God's presence, also his healing, our vulnerability, but also that he is with us, with us in our suffering, with us in our healing. Lord, we commend the sick into your care. We commend those who look after them. Please sustain them and nourish them. We praise you and thank you for your presence in our lives. Grant us that hope of Advent, that new life and light, which we celebrate at Christmas. 
also every day in the Eucharist. Lord, help us to become whom we receive. Help us to become the one whom we honor and worship in the Eucharist. You, my Lord and my God. Bless the sick, bless the carers, bless families. like to sing a little piece called Arise Jerusalem. It's a beautiful advent in Arise Jerusalem, city of God, our Saviour. For now the time has come to robe yourself in splendor. Come forth dressed in fine gold, your crown shining like sunbeams. Put on your cloak of peace, gather the poor beneath its fields. Put on your cloak of peace, gather the poor beneath its folds. Arise, Jerusalem, city who stoned the prophet, who sang no song of tears when men a vision left you. Your bread lost its good taste, your wine gave you no pleasure. Repent of all your sin, God will restore your glory. Repent of all your sin, God will restore your glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for being with us tonight. The gift and the privilege of being in your presence. As we commend our sick into your loving care for healing, renewal. Help us all to be John the Baptist like as we journey in the season of Advent. And may that light of Advent grow stronger and stronger. We ask this through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. St. Joseph and all the saints, pray for us. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, set our hearts ablaze to follow in the steps of